Hey there. Um, I just wanted to come on right now. The uh, press conference for Leah Croucher is happening live. It is 2 p.m. in England. And um, big, big news. So if you saw my last video or if you've been following the Leah Croucher story, you know that human remains were found in a house um, nearby where she went missing or where she was last seen on CCTV. Now, the um, Thames Valley Police did confirm that a rucksack and personal possessions were found at the address in Furston after they were contacted on Monday. So they were contacted by, uh, quote, a member of the public. But I've been reading, although this is unconfirmed, that it was house cleaners who had gone in. Now, this um, house is unoccupied. It is owned by somebody who is overseas, um, I believe, from the UAE. And... Uh, and it has been uh, unoccupied for quite a long time. So as we know, when Leah went missing, she had her backpack with her. She's wearing a hoodie. She had her phone. Those items had not been recovered. So, you know, we have confirmation that the backpack was found. We don't have confirmation yet about the other specific items, but, um, you know, we can, we can infer. So, the human remains were found nearby her belongings. And so that's why they immediately thought they did belong to Leah Croucher. Now, um, police had kind of been uh, at this property before. So if you've been following this investigation, they, um, the police did a door-to-door -door canvas in the area on the route between Leah Croucher's home and her job, which is where she was heading that day. Um, they said they knocked on 4,000 doors. Great. Didn't find anything. This house is one of the doors that they knocked on. But of course, it was unoccupied, so nobody was there. Um, the police spokesperson said yesterday, I believe, that you know they would have put uh, a a flyer in the letterbox uh, since nobody answered, but it doesn't sound like anybody ever followed up. Now, this is bolstered by a neighbor who um, has since moved off of the street, but she says that when the initial police investigation was happening, that the police came to see her and, you know, ask if she had seen anything on that morning that Leah disappeared in 2019, and she says she hadn't, and this is right after the disappearance, and they said, oh, okay, well, as your husband home she said no he's you know on a trip or whatever they said great we'll come back because we want to talk to him too they never followed up they never came back so if they're not following up with people who were there clearly they're not following up on an empty house either which is how you know this has gone undiscovered for so long another neighbor said that this house was used as a summer home but that nobody's really been there since 2019. however there was an article in the sun that did allege that the house has been used since uh leah went missing in february of 2019 they're saying that it was used in the summer of 2019 but you know again i'm not entirely sure about that now getting back to the presser that's happening right now the police have named a suspect and this is huge right because uh, a lot of people have been suspecting this whole time that it was Adnan Chaudhry Mr. X uh, the co-worker the married now co-worker who Leah had previously been dating um Leah's brother Hayden also you know went to court for threatening him had a protective order it was a whole thing so this suspect is a man named Neil Maxwell. Now, to my knowledge, this name has not turned up prior to this in this investigation. Neil Maxwell um, has previous convictions of sexual assault, but unfortunately, we're never going to get answers from him because he was found dead in 2019. He took his own life. Um, but the reason why he is a suspect is because, again, the, the owners live overseas. He is, according to police, the only people, the only person who had keys to this home. So he had had the keys since November of 2018. He was found dead in 2019 after Leah's disappearance. Um, so... I'm just kind of going on just so basically 
One of the big questions since um, in the past couple of days since this whole thing started was, you know, if this body of Leah Croucher has been in there, this home for the entire time, how did nobody notice, right? Even if it's unoccupied, you would think somebody had to come in and check on the house or do anything. Um, Neil Maxwell apparently is that guy. He was employed by the homeowner to carry out some property maintenance at the house. Um, the quote from police is, quote, whilst Maxwell has been nominated as a suspect, this does not mean he is guilty of any offense. We will keep an open mind and our detailed investigation will seek to gather sufficient evidence to establish the truth. This may or may not implic implicate or exonerate Maxwell or any other persons from the investigation. Maxwell has previous convictions for sexual offenses against females and was wanted in connection with a sexual assault in Newport Pagnell in November of 2018. 18. The sexual assault was reported to Bedfordshire Police on 29 November 2018, and the case was transferred to Thames Valley Police that same day. So Thames Valley Police, that is the investigating agency on Leah's case. So this guy has been on their radar since the end of November of 2018, you know, about two and a half months prior. Sorry, about, yeah, two three and a half months prior to Leah's disappearance. Although to our knowledge, there was no connection between the two of them. Um, we first, the quote goes on, we first attempted to arrest Maxwell in connection with a sexual assault the following day, 30th November, 2018, at an address in central Milton Keynes, but Maxwell was not present. So, I mean, this is like, this is just unbelievable. I mean. I, I I think it once we got the notification from police that it was her belongings that were found, I think we knew that, you know, it was obviously going to be her body. Um, her family, you know, has been to the home. They've left letters. They've left flowers. You know, they are obviously dealing with this horrible, horrible loss. Um yeah, I mean, you know, there's still a lot of testing. We don't have a cause of death or anything like that. But as soon as they found the human remains, they did launch a murder investigation. Now, this is important because um, one of the other prevailing theories in this case is that uh, Leah could have potentially taken her own life. So it does appear, based on what police have told us, that that is not the case. Um, so somebody did harm her it seems now where this home is located it's basically dead center on her path between her home and her work so her home like this house her work so basically you know whether or not this guy neil maxwell or whomever it was had been watching her because this was the path she took often or if it was just a random crime of opportunity we don't know Again, this is a heavily traveled residential area. This was a weekday morning. To me, it would be difficult to see it as just a random crime of opportunity and have nobody heard, you know, have heard anything. Nobody had seen anything. You know, nobody saw like this girl getting abducted, this girl who was a black belt in Taekwondo, by the way. So I don't know. I mean, I, I almost have to wonder if there is some sort of connection, prior connection between the two of the, them or whomever did end up taking Leah. I'm not sure. Now, interestingly, Leah's phone um, was turned off or destroyed or whatever for the last time around 834 that morning. She was last seen on CCTV. Um, about, I believe it was 816 that morning. Now that means, so if she's on her normal route, so she's on CCTV here and she would have reached that house about 10 minutes later, give or take seven to 10 minutes, let's say. And then her phone was turned off, destroyed something approximately 10 minutes after that. So it seems that whatever did happen to, happen to Leah happened 
in that very short window of time between when she was last seen on CCTV and when her phone was shut off. Um, you know, because there has been other questions of like maybe she was killed elsewhere and then somebody stashed her body and her things there. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> one of the other big, big uh, confusing things of this was like, why would a killer leave her items, leave her easily identifiable items that have been all over news reports for the past three years, right? Like destroy them, get rid of them, do something. Well, if the suspect is this Neil Maxwell guy, it kind of makes sense because he's been dead since 2019. And the I have read it does appear that her belongings might have been up in a loft or an attic, so not in a very, um, you know, open place. But somebody did find them on Monday, so I don't know if it was a cleaner, I don't know, you know, who it was, but that this Neil Maxwell being a suspect does start to make sense in terms of. Um, you know, why those items would have been left there and not destroyed. It's just amazing to me that nobody has been really in the house since then, it seems like. And, you know, unfortunately, I feel like a lot of this does have to do with COVID. What I am com confused about, and again, I did reference that Sun article, like, if, if, the owners were using this as a summer home and were there in the summer of 2019. How would they not have noticed? How would they have not have noticed a body in their home? So that's the biggest question if they were there. Now, the neighbors say that they haven't seen them past 2019 and they assumed it was because of COVID. Because remember, by summer of 2020, everything was locked down. If they're in another country, they're not going to come you know, to Milton Keynes and like hang out in their house. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We have a lot more um, to say now. I'm saying um, there is a statement from uh, Leah's parents. I don't have the text of that yet. Um, also, uh, the postmortem exam is supposed to take place today, so I think that is probably when the absolute formal identification is going to be made. Um, God, this is just so fucking sad. Um, they, the police have also said that they're going to probably be there at the home for the next couple weeks because... <clears throat> there's just obviously a lot to investigate. This has been one of the largest uh, missing person cases in this area. And Leah's posters and banners have been hanging, hanging up for, you know, the past three years. And uh, I did just see online this morning that people are beginning to take them down because she's no longer missing. Um, Yeah. We did an episode on Leah's case a few months back and um the the story is just absolutely heartbreaking. Her brother Hayden um dealt with depression prior to Leah's disappearance and once she was gone he could not take it and um and he died by suicide not too long after um leah's disappearance i believe it was about six months later so the crouchers with this news you know have officially lost two of their three children So if any of you have any questions, um, you know, let me know. Like I said, we did do an episode. So, you know, if you're not super familiar with this case, what I'm going to do after this, I'm going to actually re, um, record an update where I'll kind of go through 
everything that's been happening in this case this week since police made the first announcement on Monday. And then I'll put the original episode behind that. So you'll be able to hear that so you can get the full story. Uh, so again, you know, the podcast, in case you only know us from Twitter and not from the or Twitter, whatever, TikTok, <laughs> and not the, the podcast world is, um, and then they were gone. We, we focus on unsolved missing persons cases and which is why we did this, but obviously um, we also, when we have big news and we, we have big, um, you know, breaks in cases, we like to give updates and, uh, yeah, I don't know. So I'll be recording that. So we'll kind of get it more in a, in a cohesive, <laughs> coherent format. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. I really appreciate that. But yeah, in the meantime, if any of you have any questions, feel free to message me. Um, feel free to put a comment here. Or if you look, my last video that I put was um, about this case too. So you can always comment there and um, and I'll take a look and try to get an answer for you and put it on the show. All right, let me just refresh one more time, see if anything has happened. Oh, okay. So here's the, um, at least part of the statement from the Croucher family. Quote, we would like to take this opportunity to thank Thames Valley Police for all their efforts over the past three years and eight months. We believe that they could not have done anything differently. They have always approached every conversation with dignity and compassion. As a family, we ask that everyone respects our privacy as well as our immediate family at what is one of the most difficult times of our lives. And listen, they're showing a lot of grace here. I don't know that I would have as much grace in the situation, especially knowing that, you know, this uh, home was about a half a mile from Leah's home and it was on her route and the door was knocked on, but it wasn't followed up on. So that's tough, I think, to deal with. And I'm sure that's something that they're going to be saying what if for a very long time. Um, obviously, this is very much developing. Um, I, I will get the episode out today in place of our normal episode or previously planned episode that I'll say, because, you know, this is obviously a little bit more important, but we'll we'll keep with this. It's just so heavy. You know, it's hard. We've done like 102 episodes or something like that. And we don't have closure. Closure is such a bullshit word, but we don't have closure like this in most of those cases. So, you know, it's it's so tough. Like the family, like they said, you know, it's one of the most difficult times of our lives. But at least they finally know where their girl is and can give her a proper burial. All right. So I'm going to get going. Um, like I said, I'm going to put out an update episode, get everything kind of mo co more coherently together. If you have comments or questions, please, you can put them on my last video or DM me. All right, guys, I'll try to, you know, answer anything that I can, anything that I know from my previous research or that I found in the past couple of days. All right. And everybody, let's just keep the Croucher family in our thoughts because this is absolutely devastating news for them. All right.